these guys made Death's job all too easy. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most avoidable deaths in movies. I can fix this! I can save everybody! For this list, we've chosen characters in movies that could have easily lived, but for some reason the plot said they had to die. So do you have any regrets? Garfield, maybe. These deaths could be hilarious or stupid as long as they're memorable. How's he even walking right now, Chuck? He looks like he's gonna walk it off. He's gonna be fine. <sighs> and, obviously, spoiler alert. <laughs> Number 10, Deputy Fallon, Piranha 3D. When you're a police officer, you'll do anything to protect civilians. This is the late Victoria Sheriff's Department. The sheriff has declared an emergency. So when a swarm of piranhas attacks a popular spring break resort in Piranha 3D, Deputy Fallon does the brave thing and leaps into the water with nothing but a boat motor as a weapon. While this could be considered an heroic sacrifice, surely there was a smarter way to handle this, like slicing up the fish from inside the boat, perhaps? Hardcore, man. Number nine, James Franco, this is the end. Seth, I'm gonna create a diversion. Yeah? You and Jay make a run for it. When a movie's plot focuses on the apocalypse and the deaths of various celebrities, you're bound to see one of your favorite actors die in spectacular fashion. Full on sacrifice for you, dog. Though he's one of the main names in This Is The End's ensemble cast, James Franco was one such actor. Holy shit! It worked! As he's being pulled up to heaven, he makes the unfortunate mistake of taunting a now cannibalistic Danny McBride. Go to hell, McBride! F you! <laughs> Suck my dick! <sighs> this cancels out his one-way trip to heaven, and the rest is pretty much self-explanatory. You don't get to get sucked up into heaven because you were being petty. Tom Petty. You may not have invited me to your party, you're the guest of honor at mine. What? <laughs> Number eight, Bill Murray, Zombieland. Bill Murray, you're a zombie? Ah! Ah! Oh, God, I'm on fire! It's not easy living in a world overrun with zombies, unless you're Bill Murray and you're living in your own Hollywood mansion, that is. Oh, I do it to blend in. You know, you know, zombies don't mess with other zombies. Playing himself in Zombieland, the actor even manages to get around town by dressing and acting like one of the undead. This, of course, leads to a prank that leads to Columbus shooting him point blank with a shotgun. Even though it was only a cameo, we would have really liked to have seen more Zombie Murray. Is that how you say hello? Where you coming from? We demand a spin-off. You think you might pull through? No. Number seven, Robert Neville, I Am Legend. No, no! The death of a movie's main character can be quite heart-wrenching. In I Am Legend, it's just unnecessary. Careful, they're just running here. Come. They're not gonna stop. They're not gonna stop. With most of the world's population turned into carnivorous monsters, Will Smith's character hasn't only found other survivors, but also a cure. It's possible by drastically reducing the body temperature, I can increase the compound's effectiveness. He manages to save both from an incoming horde via his kamikaze move with a grenade. <laughs> Wait a sec, couldn't he have just taken shelter with Anna and Ethan and just thrown the grenade away from himself? Surely it would have had the same effect. At approximately 8.49 p.m., 
he discovered that cure. And at age 52, he gave his life to defend it. Number six, Candyman's victims, Candyman. 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 No one ever got this four. When you intentionally summon the vengeful spirit of an artist who had his hand cut off by a lynch mob, who was then covered in honey so he was stung to death by bees, then you really do deserve what's coming to you. And I don't know why, but she said his name the last time. Candyman. She turned out the lights. <laughs> Come on, you really could have saved yourself a lot of pain if you had just kept your mouth shut, but you didn't. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman. And so in this horror flick, Candyman proved he wasn't just an urban legend by taking it out on those who summoned him. Five, Amanda, Dan, Irene, and Billy, The Mist. Shut the doors! Shut the doors, my cat! Now, this is heartbreaking simply because it was completely avoidable. We gotta go. After a portal to another dimension is unleashed, giant monsters run rampant in the mist. The people of Bridgeton, Maine, take shelter in a grocery store, but the increasing tension of the gathered survivors forces a father to flee with his son and three others. After their car runs out of juice, the father does the unthinkable to spare his son and the others from being torn apart by the monsters. And then this happens. Number four, Jack Dawson, Titanic. You let go and I'm, I'm gonna have to jump in there after you. Everybody's seen this flick and everybody's called this death out. When the ill-fated ship crashes into an iceberg and starts to sink, star-crossed lovers Jack and Rose desperately try to escape the doomed vessel. Unfortunately, they end up getting submerged along with it. After clinging to a broken piece of the Titanic, Rose holds her unconscious lover, never letting him slip away. I'll never let go. I promise. That is, until she lets him slip away to save herself, even though everyone in the audience could tell that there was more than enough room on the board for him too. Geez, Rose, learn to share. Don't presume to tell me what I will and will not do. You don't know me. Number three, Meredith Vickers, Prometheus. Why are the smart ones always doing the stupidest things? While trying to uncover the truth about humanity's origins, the crew of the Prometheus encounters an engineer, one of the creators of the human race. He's not a fan. While most of the crew meets with a horrible fate, their leader's death via rolling spaceship could have been easily averted if she simply stepped to the side. Just run to the right. Run to the right. Run to the... Oh, forget it. Clean up on aisle three. Number two, Susan McAllister, Deep Blue Sea. We have to kill her. Uh, that's the first real smart thing you said all day. Heroic sacrifices can either be really moving or just plain idiotic. I know how to get her. to guess which category this death from Deep Blue Sea falls into? Son of a bitch. After accidentally setting free a group of super sharks, this scientist decides the best option to save the remaining survivors in the facility. 
is to cut her hand and draw the sharks towards her. She may be the smartest animal in the world, but she's still just an animal. Very noble, but wouldn't it have been just as effective to cut your hand, let loose a few drops of blood as a distraction, and not dive into the water? Hmm, scientists are not faring too well on this list. Before our number one pick bites the dust, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Peter Mucci Welch, Christine. You ain't mad, are you? There's being paralyzed with fear, and then there's this. In this adaptation of Stephen King's novel, Christine, a car becomes possessed and starts hunting down its owner's bullies. After managing to corner one of its victims, Christine decides to squash him until death. This would be ominous if he didn't actually have plenty of time to climb up over the hood of the car to escape. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite unnecessary death in film? With entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Poor fat bastard.